Hello and welcome everybody. In this episode, I will do a deep dive into specific functionality related to capacity reservations on production resources based on the activities performed in Enterprise Asset Management Module, EAM. First, we'll talk about the required configurations, then we'll talk about activities that will not create any capacity reservations on those resources, and then we will talk about the activities that will create the capacity reservations. All demos that I'll show to you today will be done in the latest release of Dynamics 365 for Finance and Supply Chain Management version 10.0.26. First, let's take a look at the asset. Here is the asset that I'll be working with, and I have connected it to this resource. Here's my production resource. It has a calendar 24 hours. That means it's available 24 hours Monday to Friday. Then I'll show you Enterprise Asset Management parameters. Right here, I have specified my maintenance forecast project as 511. And then under production control parameters, I made sure that my capacity planning includes the activities from the project. Now let's talk about the activities that will not create any capacity reservations. First, let's take a look at the resource. And if I look at the capacity reservations, starting from today's date 317, we see there are no capacity reservations that are there currently. And if we look at the Gantt chart from March 1st to March 31st, we see there are no activities here as well. So what can we do in EIM module to generate capacity reservations for that resource? And remember, this resource is connected to our asset. Well, the first thing that we can try is downtime registration. So for this, we'll navigate to Asset Management, Inquiries, and then Maintenance Downtime. Here I have created Maintenance Downtime activity for Asset DCM 101. And this asset, remember, is connected to Resource 1225. And this downtime record has a start date of 316, and it goes up to March 31st. In total, there are 264 hours based on the calendar that is associated with the resource that is connected to my asset. Even though this record is there, the capacity reservation was not created. So the conclusion that we can make from here is creating a maintenance downtime for that asset that is connected to the resource will not generate any capacity reservations for that resource. Another thing we will try is generating maintenance downtime activities. Right here, we will create a new downtime activity for asset DCM101. The start date will be today's date, and the end date will be 3.31. We will save that, and we will add our asset right here. We see that there are certain maintenance schedule lines that fall within this downtime activity. So this gives us an overview of what work order lines or what open maintenance schedule lines fall within the time range that we have specified. So we have created this downtime activity record, and now let's check the resource capacity reservations. And again, we see that no capacity reservations were generated. Another activity that will not give us this capacity reservations will be generating the open maintenance schedule lines. Here are the open maintenance schedule lines I have generated based on maintenance rounds. These activities or this maintenance schedule lines are for the same asset DCM101 open schedule lines do not give us any capacity reservations as well. And the last thing we'll check is generating a work order itself. So here I have a work order 26. It is for our asset and it is for this calibration job. If we look at the forecast, we see that it has seven hours of maintenance. And if we look at the project that is connected to this work order, here it is 187, which is a main project, dash 06, which is a sub project. If we open that project and we look at the hours forecast, we see the line for these seven hours. So the hours forecast in the project that is connected to our work order line still does not generate any capacity reservations. We can see that our project date is 315. I changed my filter under my capacity reservation to start from 315, and I still do not see any capacity reservations. So what we have concluded so far is that creating downtime record, generating downtime activity record, creating maintenance schedule line, or even creating a work order line with a forecast, none of these actions generate any capacity reservations 
on the connected resource that is linked to our asset. Now, let's see how we can generate some capacity reservations. The reason why it's important is we want to understand what activities inside EAM module will book capacity of that production resource, thus allowing us not to schedule any production orders during those activities that were generated from EAM. And keep in mind, the resource 1225 is finitely managed. So the first thing that will allow us generate capacity reservation is uh, our forecast that is scheduled. What I have showed you before was just an hour forecast that was generated, but we did not schedule it on any resource. So what I'll do now is come back to my enterprise asset parameters. And remember this maintenance forecast project 511, I'll open that project and I'll navigate to our forecast. So this is a designated project that stores downtime for EIM. What I'll do here is I generate a new hours forecast. The date will be today's 317. I select any project category. For example, I can select Apprentice, and I'll say that in total, I would like to book 11 hours. And these 11 hours represent planned maintenance that should book the capacity of that resource so it's not available for any production job booking. And then I'll create another forecast record for the same date, but here to demonstrate, I will use a completely different project category. For example, Journeyman and I'll specify 10 hours for my journeyman forecast. What I'll need to do next is to specify resource requirements. So I'm gonna select my first line, click on resource requirements, click on new, and say that this, the resource that is required will be 1225, so our resource. And I will do the same thing for the second forecast line. With that in place, I can click on scheduling and I'll do the resource scheduling. From here, I'll do forward from an empty date. That means as soon as possible from today's date. And I will click on OK. Now, if I come back to my resource, 1225, I click on my capacity reservations. I see two lines, one for 11 hours, and the second one is for 10. And now I'll show you how these capacity reservations look on the Gantt chart, because Gantt chart is commonly used by production managers to plan activities or plan production jobs. So here I will click on the Gantt chart for that resource. I'll keep it for the entire month of March and I will click on OK. Here I see my two lines. The first one is for that 11 hours starting at 12 a.m. on March 17, going all the way to 11 a.m. on the same date. And the second activity is from 11 a.m. on March 17 to 9 p.m. What's interesting here is because I have created this forecast under the forecast project, you see they show up with the designation maintenance. So even though we have selected journeyman or apprentice as the project categories, the system displays these capacity reservations under the label of maintenance. As a, another demonstration, I will create a same hour forecast, but on the different project, on the project that was not designated as the forecast project under EIM parameters. So remember, the project that was designated as the forecast project was 511. Now I'll use this 503 project, so any random project that exists. And I'll do exactly the same thing. Click on ours forecast, click on new. It's gonna be 317, the same date. And then I select any category, let's say journeyman again. And here I'll book it for, let's say seven hours, specify a resource and do the scheduling. Now, if we go back to our Gantt chart, and refresh it, we see a third activity that was generated right here on the top that goes from 9 p.m. on March 17 until 4 a.m. on March 18, the next day. But the difference between these two is that our forecast under our maintenance project show as the maintenance and our, our forecast for the project that is not maintenance forecast show the project name itself, project scheduling WF, is actually the name of the project that we have selected right here. So we achieve the required result. We are booking the capacity of that resource so it's not available for any production order bookings, but we get the two different labels. So I think the cleaner approach would be to generate these planned downtime activities under the forecast project. This way they will show up in our Gantt chart under the maintenance label. And if we go back to that resource capacity reservations, we now see 
that we have these three reservations. So the first two lines are for those maintenance activities under the maintenance project. And the next two lines right here are for the one activity for seven hours that we have generated on the random project. The second activity that will generate the capacity reservation on the resource that is connected to our EAM asset is the scheduled work order. What I'll do now is I'll go back to my EAM module and I'll open that work order that we already looked at. So here's our work order 26. We see that the status of that work order is released and we have a forecast for seven hours for the maintenance. That forecast came based on the maintenance job defaults. I did not have to populate it myself. It was defaulted based on the job and the asset that we have selected for this work order. If I look at the schedule section right here, I see that it's blank. That means it has not been scheduled. So what I'll do here is I click on the general and I'll do dispatch. We can do schedule, which just assigns the first available worker. Dispatch, that is where we as a user can specify a worker for which we want to create that booking form. So we see seven hours that were defaulted from that hour forecast. We know that in total we need seven hours. And remember, our asset is connected to that production resource. So what I'll do here is I'll select myself as the worker and I will click on OK. That will change the status of my work order to scheduled. It will generate this worker schedule and we can kind of see that it books it from 4 a.m. until 11 a.m. So why is it 4 a.m. on 318? Well, maybe that is the earliest that this resource was available. So let's go back to our resource and refresh the screen right here. Now we see this record created and we kind of see that it actually picked up as soon as the 4 a.m. activity has finished, right? So that is an expected result. What that tells us is that these planned downtime activities that we have created will be respected when the work order will be scheduled. Well, it has the reference maintenance, which is great. So basically it separates the project reference, which was for our downtime activities. And the reference maintenance tells us that this booking that capacity reservation was done for the work order in AM module. What I don't like is that when we look at the Gantt chart right here, I do not see this in my Gantt chart. I can basically see here's my latest project activity that was booked. I do not see a reservation from 4 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we know it was done because we saw it under capacity reservations, but we do not see it in the Gantt chart here. And that's where I start playing with the content and different views. I made sure that all my production and my general parameters were all set correctly. I even looked at the project to make sure that it loads project data, include the entire project. And then I saw this new maintenance tab. It doesn't have anything behind it. It just says load work order data. So I was hopeful with that checkbox checked, I would see this uh, work order activity that was planned from 4 to 11 a.m. on my Gantt chart. But when I apply those changes, Again, I do not see that. So I think it's a functionality that Microsoft is still working on. I think it's done in one place. We can see it under capacity reservations for that resource, but we do not see it under the Gantt chart for the same resource. So I think it's an improvement that should happen for that to become a, a complete solution. And now let's see how these capacity reservations will play along when we try to schedule a production order for the same resource for the same time. What I'll do here is I'll navigate to my production control module and open the list of all of my production orders. Here I have created this production order 635. So if we look at the route for this production order, we see that it calls for this assembly operation for one hour. The runtime is one hour. If I click on the operation number, I see that my resource requirements for this operation is the same resource 1225. Now let's go back to my production order. The production order is still in estimated status. Now let's schedule it. So we'll navigate to schedule, schedule jobs, and we're gonna schedule it from 316, which is date from yesterday, but we can change it to today's date as well. We're basically saying forward from today's date. So basically schedule this one hour that is needed for that assembly operation for this production order as early as it is possible. Of course, respecting the finite capacity. We have to make sure that finite capacity for our scheduling is set to yes. I'm gonna click on okay. Production order has been scheduled. 
Now we can go back to my resource capacity reservations and refresh the screen. Now we see another record has been created. In this case, the reference is production. And we see that it was scheduled from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. The reason why it's five hours here is because it's a one hour per piece and our production order was four or five pieces. Right here, here's our production order for five pieces. But the most important thing here is that it respected the existing booked capacity that was booked either A, against planned downtime, or B, against already scheduled a work order. Based on my readings of Yammer groups, that did not happen in the previous release. But in release 10.0.26, we see that when we book a production or a job, it doesn't double book that resource. So this is an expected result. I think this is a really a, a great feature that allows us to book a capacity for any planned activities or already scheduled work orders and let the production scheduling work around these existing reservations. And the last thing that I'll show you on this uh, booking is I will go and generate another work order, but this time from the open maintenance schedule lines. So in order for me to do that, I will open my open maintenance schedule lines. Remember, those lines were generated by a badge job based on either maintenance rounds or maintenance schedule. Here I have my expected start date of 326. 326 is next Saturday. And I will create a work order for it. Click on work order. It's going to be work order type preventive maintenance. That's fine. Now let's take a look at the list of my work orders. I see new work order number 30 has been created. It has not been scheduled yet. And now I will create a schedule. So I'll click on dispatch. I'll select myself again. And I'll make sure that asset and worker checkboxes are set. Then I'm going to click on OK. But what I see right away is that the schedule was created for 328, which is the following Monday. So let's just maybe check the capacity reservations here again. Here they are. Maintenance starting on 12 a.m on March 28th and finishing on 1 a.m. on the same date, one hour. Uh, why I wanted to show you that is that this scheduling mechanism respects the calendar availability of my resource. Because this is my resource, it has the calendar 24 hours. And if we look closely at it, we see that my Sundays and my Saturdays are closed. So even though the maintenance schedule line was set to start on March 26, which was the Saturday, it actually booked this one hour capacity for that resource on the next available date, which was March 28, which was the following Monday of one hour. So attaching a calendar to these production resources that are linked to our EAM asset will be an important step if you want to make sure that the maintenance is only created for these hours where that resource is available. All right, and the last thing that I want to explain is that we so far talked about a resource that is connected to our asset. But what about the bookings that were done for the resources that represent our workers? Well, it still creates the reservations, but these reservations cannot be seen from the production control resources screen. So here's a, me, uh, my resource. This is a worker. You see this resource is connected to the worker 835, which is me. I do not see any capacity reservations here. And you know that I've already scheduled at least two work orders, but these reservations will never be visible under production control resources capacity reservations. Instead, we will see them all under scheduled work order GAN charts. This is a part of asset management module. If we click on that, and let me go all the way until the end of the month, and maybe make a hours, let's say three, and then apply. That is where I see that I am booked from 4 a.m. to 11 a.m. to perform my work order 26. And then I'm booked for one hour on work order 30. So this is a separate screen that will be used, to see the capacity bookings of the EAM workers. All right, that is a very specific functionality related to AM. I just wanted to share this experience with you guys because I kind of came across and I knew that there were some gaps in it and I was kind of very interested in how closely the EAM module integrates now with the production control module. I think Microsoft is definitely on the right track. There are more to come, of course, but this is a great progress so far. 
That is all I wanted to show you today. Until the next time, take care.